Hey everyone, how you doing guys? I hope you guys are having a wonderful time out there, just kind of like, you know, chilling. What is, what is it that you do in your, in your uh, Thursday evening? Uh, you know, you could you could comment in a chat, you know, just tell me, what, what is it that you do on Thursday? You know, it's not hump day, you know, yesterday was hump day, and uh, is it like a pre-weekend kind of thing? Uh, well, you know, for me, just like, you know, I'm just accustomed to just spending time with family and all that. On a, on a Thursday evening, but you know, I just kind of wanted to share this evening with you. You know, sometimes I have these conversations and you know, today we're gonna be talking about art, right? Art, you know, there are different types of art. There are different ways of, uh, of looking at art. You know, you have musical art, you have uh, photography art, you got like, you know, painting art, you got dance art, just so many ways uh, that art can be described, but you know, today we were talking a little bit, you know, about uh, visual art, you know, and, and also, you know, uh, you know, touching a little bit on other aspects too towards the end of the program. So, just good to see you guys. Um, I have a special guest uh, today that we're going to be talking with. That we'll be talking with, and he is Matt, Mister Matt uh, Garofolo. I know he he could hit me in my head if I call that, you know, if I pronounce that wrongly. But, you know, he's going to be talking with us today and we're just going to be vibing a little bit. You know, I wish we could just some background music or something just kind of like vibrant, you know, well, it's not that type of party. It's kind of a talking party. So let me bring Matt to the screen. Matt, how you doing, bro? Hey, Jermaine, how we doing? What's up? Pretty good, man. Pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, music, music would be pretty dope right now, but uh, it's good. Our uh, our voices will uh, will do the music for us. Yeah, we'll sing it. I could just do the thing, but I'm like, ah, oh, 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 here we go, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Starting. Let's go. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be here and uh, excited about the conversation. I'll do a little uh, do a little intro. My name is Matt. You actually, you pronounced the last name uh, pretty good there. A lot of people have butchered it way worse. So you're you're in good yeah. stand. Wow, let me put myself on the shoulder. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, a little, <laughs> little clap, maybe a little clap in the comments. I don't know if anyone's doing a clapping emoji. Uh, yeah, guys, my name, um, as you can see on the screen, uh, that's my business name. I'm a photographer. My name is Matted Pictures. Um, and I've been a uh, lifestyle and portrait photographer for about, I've been taking photos for about 12 years, uh, running my business, uh, I would say, or being per, doing professional work for about six, uh, running my business professionally for about four. And this is kind of like that first year of like real, real full time, no other job supporting me, just kind of photography, doing the whole thing. So uh, yeah, lifestyle portrait photography, uh, actually I'm very, uh, interested and, and heavily work with a lot of CHH artists. If you guys don't know what that is, that is Christian hip hop. Yes, it is a thing. Yes, it's lit. You gotta get connected with CHH. Jermaine, yeah. what I'm talking about. Um, I work with artists, um, uh, shooting albums, shooting video, portraits, social media and branding. Uh, and then I work closely with churches, helping their social media brand and encourage them, find strategic ways how to help get followers, but not followers, but people to actually come to the church and, and get connected. Uh, I would yeah. I would have to say collaboration and community are like my tools of influence. And that's that's what I love to use within photography. And I'm going to stop talking. That's an intro. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that's 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 pretty cool, man. You know, because yeah. it's just so interesting when a person in art is a believer. Because you know, you tend to you tend to understand more yeah. about what's going on. Because I mean, like God connects to us through art, man. It's just it is it is so so amazing. And totally. and actually, I met you through art. So art does connect. <laughs> very true. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I'm very I'm very excited for this conversation. And then to be later, uh, I guess featured. I won't spoil the surprise. Maybe I don't know if I'm supposed to 
spoil who else is coming, but we're joining with someone else later. So that's going to be great. That, that's, that's pretty dope, man. We're looking forward to that. So, so Matt, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, how, how did you get started in art? You know, you, you did give a little bit of, you know, what you've done in the past and stuff like that. But what was that defining moment when you just like said, you know what, this is going to be my direction. You know, I, I work with students who are geared towards STEM. So they're wanting to be doctors and, and, and engineers and, uh, you know, you name it, the different careers in STEM, you know, technology. And then they tend to just kind of have that intrinsic drive to say like, oh my God, I want to be a doctor. What is it that made you think that you wanted to do art? Like, oh my God, this is it. This is my life. Yeah, I think I've always been a visual learner. I've always a uh, very hands-on type of learner. Um, and it was awesome. It was probably, I was like 14 years old. And I'm going to date myself a little bit. This is when YouTube just started. So this is back mm. like 2007, 2006. YouTube just became a thing. And uh, I was really into the skateboarding scene and a very good friend of mine, uh, his name is Adam. He handed me his, you know, Panasonic G, whatever kind of film, you know, video camera it was. He's like, here, <laughs> I want to, like film me just doing skate tricks and I'm making a video, putting it on YouTube. And I was like, I don't know how to use this. And he just kind of showed me the fundamentals of angles and positioning and capturing him in the right way. And, uh, that's when I, I like saw it, that I could have a contribution of how someone visually saw and was impacted by something. And I was like, this is interesting. I want to do this. And so, um, you know, talked to my parents that next day. I was like, I want a camera. That next Christmas, got a camera, Nikon D3100. Uh, recent, not, well, I guess it's been recently. Now I shoot with Canon. Love Canon. Amazing. I've been shooting it with four years. Great, great camera, great brand. Um, yeah, so that's that's where it kind of started. And I think now that I reflect upon it, those 12 years ago, I'm 26 now, those 12 years ago, I think God was really, I definitely believe that uh, we are all creative, not just artists, not mm -hmm. just journalists, not just people who draw. Everybody is creative. We are created right. by the creator God to then create and uh wow that's, I think, yeah i think that's that's just super powerful if, if we're creating <laughs> the image of god and he's just this unbelievable like can't comprehend image and we're made in that we should then try to create things that you know i guess i don't know god is create i mean we do like he's created us and we're able to create you know human beings as well so like i guess there you go uh and it's, you know whatever that was funny um anyways uh yeah so that's kind of where the journey started with the whole like skateboarding industry and photographing and <laughs> that's kind of where i just knew i was like i i want to do this and i i want to i want to do it so it's cool awesome you know, it's, it's interesting how you talk about, you know, God, you know, he's a creator. Therefore, he makes people who create, you know, and a lot of people would not think that God um, love art. Do, do you do you think that? Um, do, do you do you think that God actually um, support art, you know, loves it and support it? I, I de definitely believe, definitely believe that he supports it. Um, I mean, he. he to create us. he calls us to create those relationships mm -hmm. he calls us to do certain things and i think um the the biblical parable that's coming to my mind is is the people with talents there's the the person with one talent the person with three talents the person with six i may be mixing up the numbers a little bit but pretty much he gives you know there's this story where this uh you know um can't remember it's just kind of person in charge gives his servants kind of talents and yeah. there's this one guy at the end you know one guy has two talents and he puts it to use and it multiplies to four one guy has three talents and he he multiplies it to six and brings it back and says look look what i've done look what i you know and, and it's growing but the person with one talent is afraid that they're going to lose it it's a they're afraid that they're going to you know ruin it somehow so they put it in the dirt and they they save it and when the master comes back they're like look i i have this tech for you but the master's upset because they're like 
I gave you this gift to multiply, to be fruitful and multiply. And that's what God has called us to do. And I think anything that within the context of edifying God and glorifying God, something, things that are, I mean, James, it talks about, think of things that are pure, that are just, that are right. And so those are the things that I think about when I'm creating. Does mm-hmm. this glorify God? Does this give, is, am, I, am I telling a story that is real to people so right. they can connect with? But where, where does it ultimately leave them to go? Does it lead them to pain or does it lead them to peace? Does it lead them to continued brokenness or does it in question or does it lead them to joy and in a path to, to peace? And those are some things that kind of go into my mind when I create. And I, I definitely believe God has downloaded that into me so that I right. can use my talent to glorify him. So, so yeah, I would say he loves, he loves art. He loves art. And then, and then the thing about it is that not only that God loves art, but I think I think everyone in the world loves and appreciate art. You know, sometimes you know parents who are a little bit more um, uh, traditional, their kids are going off to school, and you know they said, okay, I want to be I want to be an artist or I want to be a singer. Then, you know, I'm a singer. That's that's a, that's an art as well. And you know, some parents who are traditional will be like, no, you got to do something better with your life. Mm-hmm. You know, but then but then you know when you look at the whole matter, it's like everybody. Every single person really appreciates it, you know, because it it, it, it tells a story, you know. Um, societies of every kind, uh, or political situations, you know, of, of all periods have always produced art. You know, um, I was actually googling, uh, you know, you know, some stuff about art, and then I realized that there were like some top artists that comes through the centuries, and and it continues. And you know, interestingly, you talk about you know God telling a story through art not only that he appreciates it and wants us to appreciate it but he actually uses art to tell tell us a story about himself yes. like for instance the, the bible tells us that you know he creates he puts eternity in in the heart of every person yes ecclesiastes let's go so, yeah man <laughs> I've right. recently, that's been i almost shared that and i was like oh, i'll keep it and then you shared it i was like yes yeah yeah right because I mean, like eternity, you know, someone would talk about like, you know, eternity is in the heart of everyone. Like, what, is you ta- what are you talking about? It's like eternity is that longing to know that th- there's something else that exists beyond what we see. Yeah. That's eternity because eternity has no end. It's like there, there has to be some meaning behind my life. You guys didn't hear it here, heard it before. You heard it here first. Eternity. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> it's <Yeah. never> <laughs> if you guys didn't know. Right. Exactly. So, so it's like, so it's like, you know, people who are looking for God mm. and, you know, they don't want to look for him in the church, in, in like in a church building. Yeah. They could see God in the creation, in, in the things that he created. So, yeah. so he uses creation to tell a story. Like the mountain, the mountains, you know, where did he come from? You know, mm. who made the mountains, you know, who, who carved these things so perfectly? Yeah. You know, so it's just amazing how 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 is 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 so is so like the lord made all things all kinds of trees to grow from the ground um i'm reading from the scriptures here genesis 2 9 yeah and and when he made it you know he says that you know it's good mm. and it's just it's just so it's so beautiful man that's good i think what you said um you keep telling his story, his story and there was a, a you know sometimes pastors they give you long you know parables or long descriptions but one pastor said this very simple thing he tells his story through history and if you look mm. at the word history it says his story it's the same and like i like held on to that i'm like Ooh. i'm like that's a good one i gotta i gotta hold on to that i gotta hold on to that but yeah, yeah. yeah totally. History through history. That's that's amazing. And and a verse that I was trying to remember as well. Um, I think that's uh, Psalm nineteen verses one and six. Yeah. Uh, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies proclaim the work of His hands. Mm-hmm. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Can you imagine like He's talking? Oh, God is God. talking through art. You know, I don't want to like start preaching here, but. <laughs> hey, hey! If the Lord, the Lord leads you, go ahead. Like, oh, oh, amen, brother. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so, 
Yeah, it's, it's like, you know, night after night, um, you know, creation reveals his knowledge. They, you know, they have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God put that God pitched a tent for his son. Mm. Right. You know, I could just go on and on, uh, you know, from Psalm 19, but it's just yeah. amazing. That he, that That's good, man. Yeah. 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 The, the caption there, it says the, the witness of creation and scripture. And what's, right. what's funny is like when, you know, when God was speaking, it then became visual. He said, let there be light. And it didn't just like words didn't just like fill the air. It, it just became, it just, worked. Yeah. it just became. Um, and I think something that maybe it'll direct to the person <clears throat> or not, but uh, uh, one of my pastors from, from a, a, a service that I attend at Black Rock Church here in Fairfield called Sanctuary, um, he had said that, <clears throat> you know, we are human beings, not human doings, you know, but our culture is all about right. do, 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 go, 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 never stop ever. And what does scripture say? Be still and know <laughs> that I am God. And it's like, if I'm trying to create, oh, if I'm trying to create an atmosphere of peace, but I'm, I'm all up here with photography and I'm all comparison. I'm all pride. I'm all like me, 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 work, work, control, control, control. I cannot create an atmosphere of peace for people to then create out of if there's no peace up here and if there's no peace. Right. And so like last year, if I were to define last year as like a word that God was giving me, it was posture. And it's just like aligning the whole mind, body, spirit in one posture. And I think as a singer, definitely, and I'm, I'm a singer as well, like definitely have, I love worship. I love to sing. And it's like, I didn't know that, bro. It's like, it's uh, like I guess I'm, I'm yet to find out, you know, you're a new yeah, friend. So. You'll find out, you'll find out some things. Um, <laughs> <Let's learn. laughs> All right, no, no, stop. Um, so um, the heart of worship, I think, is, it says uh, in Psalms 51 that, um, uh, give me a second. My, ro my Rolodex in my brain is catching up to my mouth. Yeah. I sometimes speak faster than my brain can like. Is it, who, who shall I send into the hill of the Lord? No, that's 24. Uh, um, 51, it talks about. Um, the, that's God, David's, that's God, David's part. Yeah. God does not accept sin offering or birth yeah. offering anymore. The perfect sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. Mm -hmm. And then it says that the, um, uh, after the broken spirit, sorry, my mind. Uh, oh, he, he will not uh, dismay or be displeased with a humble and contrite he uses the word in, in my version csb a contrite heart which is like yeah. not just humble but it's it's it you get led to a healthy conviction of guiltiness um and so living in that broken spirit is like where god exactly wants us to be and if i'm not broken you know if my pride doesn't get broken if my stubbornness doesn't get broken if if those things that you know, my flesh is raging about, um, wow. doesn't get broken. Like I can't actually use the gift that God's instilled in me, you know, right. to work. Um, kind of going back to where I, I had uh, received kind of my first camera, I really felt like looking back at it from, from now from 12, you know, 14 years later, God was like, Matt, I've instilled a gift in you. And now I'm, now I'm bringing it to light. I can, I can do this on my own. I, I, I created the whole world on my own, but it says that he wants to co-labor with us. Mm -hmm. And it's like a song by 10th Avenue North uh, called Somehow You Want Me. And the, the whole song, like in the chorus, he's just like, you don't even need me, God, but somehow you want me. Somehow mm -hmm. you just like want to like work with me and, and want to help me do something here on your earth. And that's such like a conundrum to think about. Cause it's like, who does God need to help him do anything, you know, but he created wow. it for that sole purpose. Um, and that, that ties just, it, I'm very, 
I, I never try to leave um, God out of my photography because he was the first, he was the one who gave it to me. He was the one who yeah. made me able to see things how he sees them. And if I try right. to see things how I see them, I'm going to use it for selfish gain. It's going to lead me to emptiness. It's going to lead me to a plethora of other things that probably will take me away from God. And it's just, right. that's, that's not good. You know, we both know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, interestingly, you're talking about, you know, how art helps you to connect with God and, you know, oh, huge keeping God in the equation, you know, as you, as you make art yeah. and We've seen like every time in the scriptures where Jesus really wanted to, to become one with the Father. Yeah. He would go to a solitary place. And you know, he would, you know, he would he he would connect, you know, it's it's like it's like you know, nature becomes that that bridge that creates that that ambience so for worship. And, and and I mean it happens to me as well, you know, like every time God speaks to me, this is like I'm in some sort of like quiet space, you know. And, you know, I'm a person who loves art. I love art, like, so, so bad. I'm talking about, like, you know, naturally I love, you know, musical art because I'm a singer. Right. But I do love uh, visual art. I love to design. I have a creative mind. Yeah. And sometimes I think, man, I just need to develop this a little bit more. You know, because, you know, I just, like, sit down and just, like, just get all these ideas. Mm. And, you know, just, like, God just speaks to me through art. And, you know, sometimes. You know, if you, if you come in my house, man, like you think you're in a gallery. Yeah, I can you see know, I can picture. a couple of photos. Yeah, 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 that's awesome. You know, because in my family, I'm the art person because my, my wife loves art, but not that much. Like, you know, when it comes to like every single picture in the house, I put it up and she just give me that. She just give me that range, man. She's like, OK, yeah. this is your department. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this is you. Take care of it. Yeah, yeah. because I love art, you know, because art connects us with God. It's quite interesting that. Um, it's quite interesting that when you're lighting a fire, I don't know if you if you've ever been in Boy Scout or anything like that. Yeah. You know, sometimes you go to the woods, yeah, and yeah. you know you're gonna light a fire. You kind of want something to to kind of like uh, create that flame. Yeah. Like you need some tinder, right? Yeah. So art for me is like that tinder. You know, it reminds us of God. It connects us with God. You know, sometimes I walk in my house and just look at a picture. You know, whether it's a, photog a photograph of like, you know, family, friends, or, or it's an actual art, I just look at that and just like, just get peace, mm. you know? And I want art, like for instance, like this behind me, like these things are strategic. These are like the, you know, art pieces that are created and it's, it's uh, the, the, the fruit of the spirit. Mm. And it's right at the, at the doorway to my kid's room. Wow. Right? So the whole idea is for them to see art and be connected with God. So, you know, I'm taking them to bed or my wife is taking them to bed. We stop by the door and say, you know, the, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, da, 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 da. Mm. Right? You know, the, even the Bible talks about that, you know, when they were learning the Shema in the Old Testament, you know, they would have to, like the Jewish kids would have to know the entire Pentateuch. Yeah. Right? They have to know it word by word, you know, by a certain age. Right. So what they would have to do is like, they would tie it around their you know, their, their, their hands, you know, as bracelets, mm. you know, some words, you know, so they're looking at their hands, you know, they see the scriptures and it's, it's all like pieces of art, you know, like, you know, to put, put things on their foreheads. And it's very important for us to, you know, to create a space mm. where God can have like a, 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 a free reign in our lives, like, you know, create a space where he could talk with us. And I mean, you know, art gives us that vehicle and it's just so amazing. You know, talking about loving art, man, like yeah. I bought a camera and I, I really don't know how to use it, but I just like, I just know, know I need a camera. I have a Sony A6000. Oh you my know, God. You're going to have to teach me how to use it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a, uh, you're not, not a Sony guy. I'm not a Sony user, but they, I, I know some people have their preferences. You know, I can't disclose it in public that I like Sony, so I, I can't say that. Uh, <laughs> don't let Sony sue you right now. Uh, yeah, no, Sony, Sony, yeah, it's a, it's a good brand. It's okay. Uh, but yeah, I got, I mean, the, the fundamentals of, of taking pictures is, is the three, you know, like the ISO, which is the sensitivity of the light. Um, the aperture, which is, it's like your eye. If you squint your eyes, it's kind of hard to see, right? You know, there's not a lot of light coming in. So when right. you have 
you have them open, the aperture is open, more light is going to come in. So your shutter speed <coughs> doesn't right. have to be, you know, so, uh, so high, meaning like, a you know, shutter speed is with motion and speed. I don't want to lose people here in the Chinese of camera, but you, you, you understand, uh, you know, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, and you, your your pictures will be a hundred percent better. There's all those yeah. like, people that oh, the gear. I need a red camera to film a YouTube video or whatever. And it's like, I mean, this is just the the laptop quality on the <coughs> camera. And you know, I have I have a softbox light here, and I got this you know kind of key light over here warming my face. You understand lighting. You don't need a six thousand dollar camera. You could use a Three hundred dollar camera, and know how to set up, you know, a, a setting, and you're golden. You and then you saved, you know, five thousand five hundred dollars. You know, um, but yeah, th those those questions will always. What camera do I get? Should I get Sony? Should I get Fuji? Should I get can? You know, um, which is they're good things to know. But yeah, I could I could teach you. I could I could help you with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, it's quite interesting. And then you know, this leads us to all lead us to a place of talking about um, a collection of art that the impact organization yeah. has, uh, you know, is, is currently exhibiting. Definitely. We have an art gallery and um, we have an art gallery and it's, it's called the Ethereal, the Ethereal Art Collection. It's a, it's a collection of, um, of nature, and um, landscape art. Yeah, I was checking and, it out a couple days ago and they have some phenomenal, phenomenal pictures on there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just amazing, man. Like these art, <clears throat> um, these photos were taken by a Sri Lankan photographer, um, Arish Yudayanga. And, um, you know, he, he did a phenomenal job. And um, we're actually, we're actually, exhibiting it right now um the website is right there myimpact.org forward slash art gallery uh you guys out there you're watching this and of course guys you could come in um i'm actually watching my facebook chat as we go along if you want to comment and say something you could do that um you could go ahead and check out this 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 gallery is exhibiting right now online and interestingly Matt, guess what yeah, what's up? 100%, 100% sales from this gallery. Yeah. It's been used for missions. Wow. Amen. 100%. Yeah. And, and guys, you know, for you out there, Matt is the newest member of Impact. Oh, gosh. <laughs> like, new on the block. Like, yeah. So, and I, I mean, there's so, many, there's so many stories you could tell, you know, with all that experience with, uh, yeah, um, mission trips in the past, but but you know this art, this this uh, collection is being sold, and one hundred percent of the proceeds are going to be used uh, to help people who are in underserved settings, uh, families and communities who are in need. And I'm gonna spend some time right now to kind of like you know show people what the the gallery looks like. You yeah. go to the website that's on the screen right now myimpact.org forward slash art gallery. These are really beautiful, beautiful images. And I love what you said about nature before. Like, right. if, <clears throat> go walk, go hike, go into nature. And and what I love the So Will I song. Um, right. I think it's by Bethel or Elevation. I think it'll be Elevation. As a, if the stars were made to worship, so right. will I. If the trees were made to the rocks cry out in glory. And if you ever look up Lou, Louis Giglio, he's like a, a older pastor. I, I've known him, not known him personally, but known of him for years. And he's got this video on talking about nature and stars and how they, they make sounds that right. people, that scientists and, and NASA <clears throat> scientists or NASA people, as you would say, that's a wrong term, but NASA people, they, uh, <laughs> they, um, they recorded sounds of, of stars mm. and then they recorded sounds of different animals, like whales 
and they put it, someone put them all together. They, they didn't alter the sounds at all. And they put it together and it sounds like, uh, and then they put the, the words of uh, just the <laughs> audio track of uh, how great is our God. Wow. And sounds like the song. Mm. And it's like, Yes, I think I think I've seen something like that. It's such I've, a beautiful, such a beautiful video, and you watch absolutely. it, and you're just like, okay, I can't deny that. Like that's creation happening in front of you. Right. And when people see a good movie, when people see a movie, uh, I know based it, they say based off of true stories, so it's like all of the information is not technically, but a lot of the movies or some of the movies that are actually told like full story you watch it and you're like oh my gosh how can i deny now that i've seen it right and a lot of people say well i i you know i haven't seen god so i'm not gonna and it's like look at what we're looking at wow like <laughs> that's right you, there like that's are you kidding man like look at yourself look at yourself in the mirror you think you just kind of happened like wow. ah anyways i'm not gonna i'm not gonna preach a sermon <laughs> um, which, which uh, photo? That's it, offering. <laughs> I really, I really like this this third photo, the uh, the Green Lagoon. If I don't know if you could blow that, blow that one up. The Green Lagoon. It's up the third one up, top right, top right. Green Lagoon with the little boat there. Oh, oh yeah! Oh my God, bro! This is <clears throat> this is one of my favorites. Really? Yeah, and other why people now on a missions team they here? love it too. Why is it? What What do you see? Um, let me see. I don't think I could blow it up like this, but I, I could show it from a different um, folder. Yeah. And then um, I don't know if you could zoom in, maybe. But yeah, that. Yeah, I really like the uh, the composition of it is is really nice. C could you see that? I think you gotta you gotta double click on it, yeah, and then just kind of blow it up. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so why you said this is one of your favorites? Why why is it one of your favorites? <clears throat> but I, I guess I guess it's just like you know the, the color that's kind of like popping out, and that's how we are. I, I guess that's how we, we are to God, you know. Ooh. Just, just can can you imagine? Let's go. Let's <laughs> well, go. Come on, snap on fingers, boy. <laughs> This is like you know, you can't imagine just just picture yourself, picture this being God's vantage point, wow. looking from above. Which of course, you know, God is among us, but you know, for most of us human beings, our concept is like you know, God is in heaven, but then He looks at us and you know, He sees this beauty. Wow. And He sees, and not only that, He sees this beauty, but He sees something that He can use. A boat is something that is active. A boat is something that could take your places. I like that you use that word, active. Yeah, like just, that. that's good. You know, good. yeah, man. It's like it's like it's just it's just so amazing, man. You yeah. guys out there watching this, make sure you go to the website myimpact.org forward slash art gallery. Set these photos out, buy one, and a hundred percent of your funds that you use to buy these photos go to missions, helping people. Yeah. Man. This is amazing, boy. Yeah, I definitely love the the boat. It's a it's con it's it like. It's a contrasted color because the green too is it's not like a, a it's like a yellow green so it kind of desaturated the the hue of the green which yeah. is like, a hue is like a, a tint like a, a, a shadow of the color um saturation is kind of that like i use the word punchy it's very bright okay it controls right. the brightness of the color and luminance is like kind of the the dark dark and light which is different from bright I don't know. that's a whole nother conversation but i love the the hue of the green the tint of it um it's kind of got that desaturated look and then you got the the bright blue just popping right out and yeah. what's so crazy is that if, if if they waited for the boat to like go a little further than the tree like it would be a totally different photo and a totally different impact and so yeah. like that's why when people are like, oh, what's what's a great photo? You know, it's it's tough. It's tough to say what's great. You gotta that's kind of be like a, a personal yeah. conviction. Great is relative. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of great is relative, but like yeah. 
I, I really like the composition. The boat's directly in the middle. The, the rule of thirds, if you've ever seen that on your like phone camera, if you ever, you got the grid on the phone, so you can kind of place the your subject within. It's called rule of thirds. It's just kind of, I, I, I like don't like math, but my brother is a math teacher and he's, oh, he's like, math is in photography. Math is in photography. I'm like, no, I can't accept it. I can't. But then I look at him like, I just won't, I just won't tell him that it's, yeah, that it's, that it's there, but it is. Uh, yeah. But the, the composition, the composition does it, does it really for me. It's good. Wow. Man, like you know, it's, 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 it's interesting how you said that because uh, I have a colleague of mine, um, she's an engineer and before entering the, the field of engineering, she was actually an artist. And some of my other colleagues are, are wondering like, you know, what's the connection? Mm. But, but you just did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get a connection, man. Like these things are precise, you know? You know, it's precise. Where, where, would, where in your house would you put this? Or in your office? You know, where would you use this piece, piece of art? I don't know. I don't know. My wall, my wall is blue. I don't know. Maybe. I, maybe I would get it with a frame with like um, a white border around it, probably. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. I probably... And like a mat. <laughs> uh, yeah. A mat, matted border. Uh, I don't know. I actually, I do have some boats over here. Some like old time boats that i got from like my uncle like years ago and i just kind of have them as like just chilling in my room so maybe i would put it like right next to where the boats are just to kind of right. give that nautical you know nautical theme that cool like little vibe there but right. yeah that's, that's a nice that's a nice shot <laughs> awesome man uh we're gonna be moving away from the segment a little bit because uh lisa sure. scales is here and uh we're gonna be taking her to the screen in just a little bit um in a few seconds oh. But maybe could we look at another one? Uh, yeah. Do you like another one? Definitely. Uh... Guys out there, you could peruse these all by yourself. You know, go to myimpact.org forward slash art gallery and look at the collection. And you could always buy an art for the support of the underserved um, families or communities. Oh, man, they're all just like, re they're really good, really good shots. Um. Okay, I like uh, if you go to the image, it's called composed. Uh, it looks like it's a bunch of palm trees. Yeah, I hope I hope that's palm trees. Yeah, th those okay. are. So this is really uh -huh. cool. Um, you have multiple palm trees, just kind of like rule of thirds. It's all in line. It's all really nicely set up. Um, and I think what what I'm gonna connect it to God because I can't any other way. God is a God of order and design. Right. Okay? You look at things, a, a, an engineer, my dad is a mechanical engineer. If you make the part that if, if he's, he's in charge of directing people to make all the different separate parts to complete the machine that makes the microchip, that's what he does. And wow. so he, he's in like charge of all of that. So he needs to make sure that not only he knows all the pieces, but he knows exactly where and what and how they're supposed to be made to then help those other people know exactly how, if one person makes a part that's like a little off, the machine doesn't work. It just, it's fundamentally factual. The machine will not work. And wow. so when I look at this image, <clears throat> it's order and design, which there can even be order and design in chaos in something that doesn't look yeah like, which is enough but i think that that this kind of drew me in and what's also kind of cool if you look i don't know it's kind of like coming out in my brain it's almost like directly set up if you look in the middle of the photo there's like a little bit more of a gap um within yeah, the I think I see it. you kind of see that yeah yeah, yeah cool. exactly right there and you're like, oh, all order, all order. And then, oh, there's kind of a space there. And it's directly right in the middle of the frame. And so it's, there's- it's, a, it's like it's halfway. Right, it's like it's halfway. There's a, um, a photographer that I follow, YouTube, Instagram. He's just a great visual storyteller, great uh, imagery and very intentional with his images and his visuals. His name is Trevor Went. And uh, he has this video about self taking self portraits, 
And I think it's great as any creative, especially one with a camera, to get in front of the camera a little bit. And I, I love, honestly, like, I don't mind being in front of the camera. I love making a fool out of myself. And, and that's how I help people, you know, laugh and smile when I'm taking their photo and I'm, I'm just being a fool. And so I'm being a fool at, 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 you know, my own expense so that they can, you know, smile or, or you know, uh, just have a good time at the photo shoot. And so um, what I've learned in front of the camera has helped me so much behind the camera. And so with saying that Trevor went, he had said, um, taking an image, especially of people, taking it, if the image alone looks amazing mm-hmm. and all you have to do is just put the person in, in the photo, your photo will like 50%, 70% be a, a much better looking photo, especially if you're taking, you know, people, uh, products or something like that. It's because that visually appealing, if, you know, like I would put a person, if I were to put a person or a plane in this picture, uh, I'd be able to find a certain spot so that it's not distracting to the whole image. And that's what street photography is, is waiting for somebody or something to cross the frame at the right area and you take the photo and you, and you pause time, you know, that's, that's our superpower. We get to pause time. Um, and it just for a moment, um, and it's God's downloading other visuals in my head, but I, I won't, I won't <laughs> hear it cause it'll just, it'll take up too much time. But yeah, I, I love this. This image is really nice order and design. Um, yeah, <clears throat> yeah it's really nice. Oh, well, and uh, we're going to talk to Lisa skills now. Um, yeah. yeah just, bring just, on. Quick, just, 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 but just quickly mention it. Like, you know, this reminds me this this when i see this i see synergy Ooh. because you know when when one person do something yeah you know or if you have 10 people working towards uh, a certain goal mm-hmm. and each of those 10 persons do it individually you're not going to get the same effect as when all those 10 people come together to do that task amen so i see synergy here i see a community of people working together to do uh, a, a task and doing it well yeah, you know, that's, one chases a thousand, two puts ten thousand to flight. Can you imagine one person chasing one thousand, but when two people coming together, you, you chase not two thousand, you chase ten thousand. That's synergy. That's 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 it right here for me. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um. <clears throat> so I'm going to introduce. So now we're going to be moving to another segment where we talk about connecting uh art and the community. And we're going to be talking to Lisa Scales. I'm going to be introducing her before uh, she comes on the screen. So Lisa Scales is the executive director of the Cultural Alliance of Western Connecticut. Lisa is uh, so pretty much, yeah, executive director of the Cultural Alliance of Western Connecticut, uh, which is a regional organization uh, for resources, information, and support for creative leaders. Wow, that's awesome. The Cultural Alliance is dedicated to empowering the art community, the arts community, to grow to the economy, to grow the economy and enrich people's lives. Before joining the Cultural Alliance, Lisa was a civil rights leader for many years. She served in several capacities on the local and state levels before retiring as the president of the NWACP Connecticut State Conferences of Branches. Her civil rights work included advocacy for legislative issues, training and mobilizing local leaders, coordination and building collaborations for local statewide efforts affecting African-Americans and the disenfranchised. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Oh, we just have a gentleman on the screen, but we're talking to many people out there. Let's welcome uh, to the screen, to the set, Miss Lisa Skills. It's so, it's such an honor to have you on this platform. Oh my What, what do we do to deserve this? Oh my goodness. Well, you just had to invite me, Jermaine. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it took, just an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> now it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for invi- for the invite. I really appreciate it. Yes, it's such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. So, uh, so Lisa, so uh, tell me a little bit about the Cultural Alliance of Western Connecticut. Like recently, I learned about this organization. 
because you know I'm uh, and, and Matt, our co-host, is going to be jumping in and you know you know talking to you as well. Um, I, I live I've lived in Connecticut for maybe four years. I've I've been a I'm a native of Jamaica, and then you know before coming to coming to Connecticut, I was in New York. So New York has always been like my home. You know, for, for many years, I just felt like I'm just only sleeping in Connecticut because I work in New York. And for the longest while, I was even going to church in New York. So like, I'm there in New York, like Monday to, from Sunday to Friday. And sometimes it's Saturday, like every day. And then recently, I've just been having this desire to do more in the community because Impact does a lot of international work. You know, we've been to Guatemala, we've been to Jamaica for missions, we've been to, right now we're planning to go to the Dominican Republic. But then there's something that's, strike, that's striking me to do more in the community, to kind of more. And then I, I met you through your website. And when I saw your website, I was like, oh my God, this is something that tells me I need to get involved with the Cultural Alliance. And this is your opportunity to tell us a little bit more about what you do. So you're not only educating the people out there, you're also educating me right now. Because I'm going to get involved. I did. We did talk about, you know, getting plugged. So. Yeah, well, I know. And if this is the way that we got to do it, Jermaine, I'm happy to do it. Uh, I, I have to say your story um, is not unlike so many people that I've heard. You know, we're a nonprofit. So um, getting us getting out there, our ability to outreach is is you know, it's limited. I mean, we have, uh, we're a small organization. We have a big brand, big job and big mission, but our, our, our um, you know, in terms of our resources are very limited. So our outreach is not like what we would like it to be. Um, and so, you know, people kind of meander and they find their way to us, um, which is ultimately really what we want. So I'm glad that you stumbled upon us because that's that's actually what happened. There's um, there's so many reasons though, I, I am so like, you know, excited about you finding, finding the Cultural Alliance because of what it is that we do. And um, what I haven't had the chance to tell you is that what it is that you do with impact, there's some alignment with my own personal passions, not only with the arts, but, um, you know, with Christianity as well. And my, and, and my story includes, um, I think there's some, some, some alignments because my story includes utilizing the arts probably throughout my entire career. And this is definitely my third, my third career choice in life. Uh, but I've always used the arts to push forward um, my overall objectives in my professional life. So um, I, I feel like you and I kind of align in that way. Um, certainly Impact is using the performing arts uh, to further your mission. So I love that. Um, the Cultural Alliance is um, also, you know, in a type of organization that performers like yourself and others uh, you're really our market. Uh, we we are here to serve artists um, of all different <laughs> mediums. You know, whether you're a visual artist, or performing artist, or a graphic designer, or a um, a maker of you know fun and interesting things for people to use. You could be an industrial mm -hmm. designer. Um, our 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 bucket is really very very broad in terms of who we support. Um, and our mission is, is really simple. It's all about the economic development of communities and it's all about the quality of life um, and how the arts and the arts being a, a major contributor to both of those things. So our programs, all of our support centers, centers around small business. How can we help your business to grow? Um, and it's also centered on uh, social justice. I mean, that's a big issue in a big um, place that we invest a lot of our a lot of our time. So we've got um, two critical two central programs that support that one is the creative notebook, which is our workshop series that we offer every year. And the other is walk in their shoes. It's a program that deals with racial equity and social justice. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, that that, that is so amazing. You know, so 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 tell me a little bit. You know, so you gotta catch me up. You know, yeah. So this is this is something that you continuously do. T tell me about uh, maybe, you know, one of your past projects that you know was like 
you know, that really oh. resonated with people? Yeah, well, you know, the things that, uh, in terms of um, events, you know, when you think about the arts, you always think about the events. And yes, we could throw a good party. We could do that too. Um, but it's not central to our mission. Our mission is all about connecting artists with one another and connecting businesses and people with them. So if you're a producer of art, if you, if you produce programs, if you produce artwork, um, what we're mostly interested in is how we, you know, is connecting people to uh, to those producers and to those presenters. We ourselves don't, we don't really provide a lot of, we don't really do a lot of events, uh, but the events that we do do is all about that. So for example, um, we used to, we used to put on this amazing um, art exhibition at the Danbury Mall. As a matter of fact, um, it was one of the first things that we did that was really high profile. And it was a way for us to increase visibility about our organization. It was very young. We were very young as, an, as a group. So we wanted to, um, of course, increase our visibility so that people, you know, uh, could find out about us and get connected with us. But it was but it was also an amazing way for visual artists to show their work. And it was a, it was a spectacle. I mean, we would do it in the very center of the Danbury Mall. <laughs> wow. uh, and we would have, oh, anywhere between, you know, 150, 200 pieces of work up for two weeks. Uh, and it was a production. I mean, you know, it was it was a great way for the community to get involved because we needed, um, you know, a lot of volunteer help. And um, and the mall loved it because, you know, it was a central feature for a portion out of the year. Uh, it, it was it was good. It was a lot of work, um, but it was it was good. So we did we do things like that um, downtown Danbury, where we're based. We operated our um, accessible art show. Um, a program and th and that involves partnerships with public and private venues. So um, Danbury City Hall, City Center Danbury, Hodge Insurance Company, Mothership Bakery, all of these interesting commercial places and public spaces, they would lend their office areas so that artists can show their work. Um, and they would partner with us in order to be able to do that. Um, and so our job was to, you know, select the artists, to do all of the backroom administrative type stuff, select the artists, select the work, schedule the shows, um, and, and sort of be that administrative support on the back end throughout the year. So that's another program that we provide. Um, wow. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, well, now since COVID, you know, we can't no. do any of that. Um, so we pivoted, like so many organizations, to online and outdoors. So our accessible art um, could not really function during 2020, of course, um, at the height of the pandemic. But um, for 2021, we're going to be accessible art has come back. And we are partnering mm -hmm. with a, um, a winery, a vineyard in Newtown, Connecticut, um, it's Aquila's Nest Vineyards in Newtown, and we're going to be opening up um, a sculpture exhibition on June uh, June eighteenth. It opens through September, so that'll be fun. Wow, that's that sounds amazing. I, I yeah. heard all, all great things right there. That's <laughs> wow. definitely well, be a part of that. Well, I have to say, a lot of what we do is yeah. incredibly. On, and then we've got the create creative creativity and balance, which you're a part of. Uh, so that's going to be that's going to be fun. And people are people are buying up those tickets. That's what I like to see. It's going to be some great. I was just going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I cannot wait. I'm so excited about that. We've got Palabolus. I mean, for anybody that doesn't know them yet. Uh, I'm so grateful for their partnership. So grateful to, you know, have connected with you, this amazing organization that's doing such great work, offering all this wonderful photography to be able to support your mission. Because that real that helps us too, right? I mean, so it, it's right in line with what we are all about, you know, to be able to help uh, to, you know, the uh, mission of impact through your photography exi exhibit. Um, it, it, that's all about who we are. That's what we want to do. So um, we've got that. We've got two great food vendors. Oh my God. You know, oh. Empire Incas with Peruvian, delicious Peruvian food, authentic Peruvian. And then we've got Opal's Kitchen, authentic Caribbean food. Um, it, it's going to be great. Uh, performance from Palabolas. And then we've got other performers that are coming and some live music. 
on the rooftop, no, no less, on the rooftop, downtown Danbury. I mean, you know, it, it just can't get any better than that. Can't get any better. It's going to be amazing. You're pulling out all the stops. You're, you're doing all the right <laughs> things, Lisa. It's, it's good. Yeah, well, we, we hope that we hope to see you and many other people because um, I also think that people are ready to get outdoors. They're already outdoors, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's just kind of it's time to offer some something that's different. Um, people, are, I think, are anxious to get out and moving again. Yeah, right, right. And and then that space is just beautiful. The venue, you know, I went there like a few weeks ago to just kind of like you know soak it all in. You know, the rooftop of the Patriot. Patriot Garage, Patriot. 21, yeah, 21 Delay Street. So just in case, you know, if you're just joining us and you're wondering what we're talking about, just letting you know that Impact will be collaborating with the, uh, the Cultural Alliance of Western Connecticut. And we are going to be part of an event that is called Creativity in Balance. And of course, you see those uh, creative people standing at the side right there, you know, standing on top of each other. That's the Palabalus group. They're going to be dancing um, on that evening. Uh, the Palabalus Dance Company is going to be there. And Elisa just mentioned uh, two very, very, very tasteful, um, you know, cuisines. Um, the Peruvian, uh, a Peruvian restaurant and the Jamaican restaurant is going to be providing lunch. And of course, you know, you could get your tickets. You know, you could read the, the words that are strolling across the screen right, the screen right now. Uh, that tells you about the event, June 13, 12.30 to 2.30 on the rooftop of the Patriot Garage, 21 Delay Street. Uh, you need to buy tickets for this event. Um, 20, it's like $40 for the ticket. The $40 it ticket gives, includes lunch, it includes all the performances, uh, the live music, and of course you get to see some um, you know, photography. There'll be a photography exhibit there. So lots going on in that in, in that lunch hour. Right. The impact uh, ethereal um, exhibit. Our exhibit is going to be there at that event as well. So you want to be there. So what you could do, you could buy your art online. Um, we've told you about the website before, myimpact.org forward slash um, art gallery. Buy the photos online, and then you could come to the event and pick it up there. You don't necessarily have to pay for shipping. So we're we're gonna be exhibiting, and we're also gonna be having uh you know handouts of these uh, photos that's been purchased online. It's just gonna be a wonderful event in Danbury on Sunday, June thirteenth, and we're so excited. So excited! Uh, bring your lawn chair. Um, that's the only thing you need to bring. Food. We'll be there um, when you get there, and uh, we'll have beverages for you, and just come and relax, have a good time. And it's rain and shine, by the way. So um, if it does rain, we're just going to move one level down on the parking garage so that we can get some cover. So this event is happening, rain or shine. Wow. That's that's just amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, Lisa, I guess can I yeah. put a plug in too for my boy Raymond? Raymond Pinto, um, who's going to be another performer there. Uh, he and I have been um, collaborating yeah. all, all year so far. Um, he's actually I'm very lucky because he was on loan to the Cultural Alliance from the Connecticut Office of the Arts for a program that they call Bridge Builders uh, because equity and justice is not just something that's important to the Cultural Alliance. It happens to be very important to the Department of Economic and Community Development and the Connecticut Office of the Arts, of which we are really strong partners with. And, uh, and so they put together a pilot program this year called Bridge Builders, uh, which basically funded um, a, you know, a few resources to be able to pair with regional organizations like the Cultural Alliance to build programming, to help build audiences and awareness around issues um, surrounding racial, racial injustice um, and equity. So um, Raymond happens to be a dancer. He's based out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, I've been working with him all year. He's been a godsend for me with some really interesting content. So you should check that out too, if you get a mm -hmm. chance. Um, on our website, but he's a dancer and a choreographer. So he's put together a very special piece for June 13th uh, with three amazing dancers who's going to come and perform that that uh, piece of choreography. So really excited about that too. Wow, wonderful. Wow, just something that we can't afford to miss. So yeah. guys, you could get your ticket, get your ticket at Eventbrite. 
uh, you know, go to Eventbrite, you know, it's a public site, just type in cultural uh, creativity and balance and you'll find the event. And yeah, or they can also go onto our website or your website. Yes, it's on both of our websites. Um, it's the CA. C-A-W-C-T dot org. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> or you go to myimpact.org and you find it. This, this information is everywhere. It's everywhere. All right, Lisa. Thank you so much for joining us today. And yeah, you know, it was so, you. such a great delight to talk to you. Sorry. Yeah, you too. Could I just say one thing, Lisa? When you were talking, I really just got this like, I don't know how to explain it, but how I explain it is just, I got this piece when you were talking that you really allow your artists that you work with to be the artist. You take care of everything else and they don't got to worry about it. Just like I, I photograph uh, weddings. And my job is to allow the, especially the bride, to not worry about anything. And like, I got it covered. I got the shots. I got the kiss. I got the, all the detail. Like, you don't got to worry about anything. And I, from, from just you speaking, like, I've never met you before. From you speaking, I just really feel that you and your team just allow the artist to be the artist. And Absolutely. everything else you take care of. So I'm, I'm really excited to meet you in person. I'm really excited to attend this event. And uh, I, I love everything that you're doing there. It's awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Um, it, was, it was really fun. And it's good to see you. Yes, likewise. God bless. See you soon. Bye now. Sweet. Wow. It's just one, one thing after the next. She was like, boom, boom, boom. She had, she had everything ready. And it sound, I mean, it's on a rooftop. Come on, guys. It's on a oh, rooftop. My God. Like, come on. Bro, like, yeah, that, that venue is so beautiful. It's like, yeah. it's like you go to the rooftop and you're looking, you're overlooking Danbury. It's just so beautiful. And, and now, like, people are looking for outdoor events. Definitely. This is the perfect space to be. So it's like, it's outdoors, but it's not outdoors. If you understand what I'm talking about. So, oh, you, yeah. know, it's, you know, it's, it's enclosed, but then it has enough space and air and everything. It's just beautiful. So creativity, creativity and balance is going to be amazing on um on june 13th june 13th sweet yes so uh um, what do we got what's left <laughs> i think i think we've covered our grounds i think we got it we've covered we've covered all grounds man it's like it was a wonderful conversation to have today uh you know with you and and pulling lisa in as well yeah. Uh, just to recap a little bit, uh, letting people know that the the Impact Art Gallery is open. That is, uh, you know, the Impact Organization, our missions organization. We have an art gallery. It's open. Uh, you could get, uh, you could see the the photos at uh, on our website, myimpact.org forward slash art gallery, and we have the eth uh, the ethereal collection um of photos being displayed right now when you buy these photos 100 percent of the proceeds goes goes to missions so you know you're buying a photo you're getting some beauty in your house and then you're supporting people who are hungry it's just uh amazing the way in which we can support people and you know for those of you who are watching from the danbury <coughs> area we're really getting plugged in the community and uh you know we, you're going to be seeing a lot of us uh, in the community, like, you know, impacting and impacting and impacting, impact, impacting the community. And we have some very good news to share, but we're not going to share that today. Um, so, you know, we're getting some resources that is geared towards serving the community. And we're just so excited uh, just to be able to do that, um, Danbury. So stay tuned if you want to get involved with impact. Just visit our website, send us a message, and you'll get plugged. Matt, are there any closing words today? Um, if I could just shame shameless plug. Uh, so I'm on I'm on Instagram. I have a website. Uh, you can go to my website, uh, www.maddedpictures.com. Um, I've actually been off of most, if not all, social media. There's a lot out there, but I've been off of mainly Instagram and Facebook all this year. Um, just working on myself, working on you know, my spiritual, mental, you know, physical, all that stuff. Uh, and, uh, I'll, I'll be, I'll be back on there. 
hopefully before the end of the year. I got a lot of content now to share, but uh, God's been really doing a work in me and, and staying off of there has been uh, helping a lot. But yeah, Instagram is still out there. You can check it out on Instagram, Matted Pictures. Um, uh, the name is, it's been up there, I think. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that that's pretty much uh, all for me. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation uh, with my friend Jermaine here and uh, really excited to, hey, there it is. Appreciate it. Uh, really excited to, uh, yeah, just continue our, uh, our professional, uh, relationship, our friendship here and, and, uh, continue to working together, man. Yeah. Look, looking forward to that, man. And, uh, and I'm trying to get the pawns off, man, because we got a fashion issue to do this summer ball. Hey, let's do it. So I'm ready. Yeah, we're going to do it. So lots, lots to come <laughs> for sure. Okay, guys. Um, let me see if anyone is anyone wants to have like uh, anything to say before we leave. I'm actually looking at social media. If you want to make a comment, guys, you could do that. You know, you got like two seconds before we two seconds. exit. Like Tom, Tom. So it's already done. <laughs> okay. All right. I uh, just want to shout out the people who are watching today. Um, Elizabeth Beth, uh, good to see you. Uh, Dorothy Gillings. Uh, uh, Cheryl Hatwood, good to see you guys. All right, so take care, everyone. Uh, it was good chatting with you today, and that's a wrap for yeah. from us for, for now. And have a beautiful rest of the evening. See you guys. Have a great one.